We are in Backup Exec 15. I'm going to show you how to back up a server. So first off, we're going to assume that you've already done a couple of things. One is created the storage. Uh, we've got a storage pool set up with a couple of different drives that we put in it. If you have not done that or need to know how to do that, then, then you can check out the other videos in this playlist. And there's a short two and a half minute video that tells you how to do it. Let's go back to our Backup and Restore tab. And we see our single server that we have in here. Now, in uh, this version of Backup Exec, every server is mentioned individually. It's no longer set up in one backup job. You have to set up a backup job for every server. That changed back in 2010. So let's go ahead and right click on our server and we're going to want to back it up. So right click and choose backup to disk. And you could also choose backup and convert to virtual machine or backup to disk and simultaneously convert to virtual machine. So let's go ahead and click backup to disk. Now this is a uh, virtual machine itself. So we're just gonna go ahead and click the ignore not that message anymore. All right, so there's our server and there are all of our resources on the left hand side. And on the right hand side is our schedule and what we wanted to back up and how we want to back up. So let's go ahead and first check our test edit credentials. So we want to make sure if we click test all that everything can be backed up. We're not going to get any errors uh, based on username and password and that kind of thing. So you should get it at the green light that says, hey, everything's good. But even if you don't get that on everything, as long as it says it on most things, uh, it's okay. So for instance, this one says uh, test not applicable, which would be on SQL Server. That's okay. So click OK. Now we'll click on Edit. Now we don't want to back up everything on here because we know our E drive and our F drive are our backup drives themselves. You don't want to back up the backup drive. And so we want to choose our SQL Server and we want to choose System State so we can get the, the server back to where it was in case of a crash. And of course we want to choose our C drive with everything in it. So go ahead and click OK when you're ready. If you want to deselect anything you can just by clicking the box. You can also deselect individual folders or individual files as well just by going over and unchecking the box. All right, so on the right hand side, it's a little trickier. We have a full backup and an incremental backup. So the full backup is the entire server, everything, everything that was uh, checked with the green uh, check mark in those boxes. <clears throat> our incremental is anything that's changed since our last full backup. So we're going to go ahead and click Edit. And we're going to go through each one of these that applies. So for instance, under the schedule, we have our full backup, which is good. Name of our job, which is fine. Uh, the recurrence. So it's going to do it once a week on Friday night. If you want, you can change that just by hitting the drop down list and changing which day of the week or days of the week you want. You can do days, you can do hours, whatever it is that you'd like to do. We're going to leave it at the default of, let's see, we'll go back to weeks every Friday night. Okay. Uh, you could also choose to run now with no recurring schedule, you know, that kind of thing. So there's different options. You can also put the job on hold after you create it. Uh, the next one is the incremental. And that's the one that changes since uh, any changes made since the last full backup. And you can once again choose the drop down list and change uh, to different days of the week or uh, that kind of thing. All right, so we can also do the same thing, uh, backup without a schedule, uh, submit job on hold. Let's click on storage. This is where the, the, the backup actually backs up to. So by default, it's going to say any disk storage. But if you want to choose a specific disk storage, such as our pool or our drives, you can certainly do that. Since we created a pool, I'd like to back up to the pool so it doesn't accidentally just pick a single drive and when it fills up, runs out of uh, space. All right, so it's going to keep for two weeks on the full. So it's going to keep two, two full backups before it overwrites it. Uh, you have the option to compress, and you can choose software compression. You have the option to encrypt, which is, of course, a good idea. But if you do that, you actually have to set up your encryption key, which we'll show in a different backup. <clears throat> Same kind of thing over here. We've got our compression and our encryption type if we want it, and the incremental backups only keep for a week. All right, network, you can choose to back up to any available network interface, or you can hit the drop down and choose a specific network interface. So if you have one interface that's separate from the rest of the network you want to use, you can do that. You also have the option of doing IP version four or IP version six. Notifications, so if you want to have a notification, you can click on manage recipients, add a recipient, 
and you, it'll say, if, hey, you haven't fig configured this yet. You want to do that now? Sure, we want to do that. So here's where we put our email server. If it's your, um, if it's an Office 365 one, you can just put in office365.com. Uh, put in a sender name. This is your email, uh, uh, sorry, the actual name, and then your sender email address. And then if it needs authentication, which most servers do, put in your username and your password. Most of the time, the username is the email address itself, but sometimes it's domain backslash username. So uh, usually the people running the mail server can tell you what's going on there. Uh, you can also have a text message sent if you want that as well. So you put in your text message service and provider address. Now this is a little bit trickier because it requires some special characters. So what you want to do is look up online for your particular character, uh, for your particular uh, cell phone company for what characters you need to put in here to get that to send properly. All right, after you've added your recipients, then you'll see the, the name in the list. You'll check those boxes and then you'll move on to the next one. All right, you can also do a test run where it'll run through everything and see if it gives any errors before uh, you actually run it. Uh, verified, this verifies the data after it's all run, after the backup's run. I tend to not do this because uh, it takes so much time that the backup job will, will never end by the time it's time to run again the next time. Uh, advanced open file, this is a good idea to have using snapshot, te snapshot technology. Make sure that your volume shadow copy service is turned on on any service any server that you would like to um, back up. You have uh, the option to use an off-host backup to move backup processing. So basically, this moves the processing off to another server in case you don't have very much server uh, power on this particular one that you're doing the backup. Uh, security, you can put in security there. You can run a back job immediately when, uh, when an elevated semantic threat uh, con uh, level is issued. So basically, if you have semantic antivirus and it detects that there is a big threat then it will automatically run a backup at that time to uh, keep from losing any data if you don't have the semantic uh, antivirus then you're kind of out of luck all right so you can do pre or post commands this is definitely for advanced users i have no reason to do any of those so we'll just go ahead and move on uh, file and folder options you've got some different things here enable uh, simple instances backups for ntfs volumes uh, you know, basically, I don't touch any of this. I don't see any reason to, but you certainly could. Um, here's the backup open files option. With a lock is definitely the best way to go. Again, make sure that you have volume uh, shadow copy turned on. Microsoft SQL. So if it sees a SQL database, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to do a full backup of that. And on incremental, it'll do any changes. If you have an Exchange server, you'll see an Exchange option as well. Or if you have any other feature, you'll see those options in this backup. Exclusions. Uh, if you'd like to exclude anything particular, you can put the the, fi the, the uh, path to those files here, and you can uh, just exclude those files from being backed up so they won't be backed up instead of going in and just unchecking the box. All right, so when you're all done, you just go ahead and click OK, and then go ahead and click OK again, and you'll notice once that's done, you will get uh, some new information that shows up on this line. And it says, hey, our next backup is at 710, and it's going to happen at 11 o'clock. And then after each backup, it'll show either a green, a yellow, or a red to tell you if it backed up properly. Obviously, green is, is good. Red is, is, it means it's bad. Something bad happened. Yellow means it did back up, but it missed a few files. So that's how you set up a backup on uh, Semantic Backup Exec 15.